the music. Uh -huh. Fucking copyright reasons, god damn it. Yep. Um, did you tweet out a link, or have you started Yeah, the link's out. <laughs> Too bad we just can't cut this part out, right? What? <laughs> oh. louder. Fucking god damn it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, is Neo Extreme, and our guest, Hi. of course, is the former NCW World Heavyweight Champion, Lance Romance, the Rookie of the Year. Lance, welcome to the show. First guest, how are you feeling? I got my thinking cap on with beer. I'm ready. Poor oh, man, so Scotch. <laughs> but either way, Tony, you got the questions. Lance, you got the answers. Let's get this chaos conversation going. Okay, uh, first question, guys. Um, so what was your early career like before you joined these major shows? Well, believe it or not, I was actually an exclusive to this show that closed down, unfortunately, called Southern Wrestling Federation for about a year now. And, you know, so it, was owned by, you... I don't know, it was owned by CM Puma and all that. So, were you a part of the show for a year, or did they have they closed down for a whole year so far? Like, the yeah, year they... I was a part of it since 2K18. Oof, nice. Okay. They That's brand loyalty there. Year. They closed down, like, mid-2019. So, what was your experience there? It was fun. Any big yeah. title opportunities that you got? Anything that could break you out into stardom? Not, not really. I was more, I was fairly new, so I knew I wouldn't get like that instant opportunities. True. Some people take years to get an opportunity. Yeah, that's that's true. Others that's take true. days. So you I know. did like their Western atmosphere they had. Explain it. Their their titles instead of calling it like their world title, they had like. The Lone Star Championship and all that. Oh, okay. So they so made so titles like... exclusive to what they were. Like, hey, we're a Southern yeah. Wrestling Federation. We're gonna yeah. like treat it like, like such. Territory. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um. So, question two: What was your first big opportunity? Well, you kind of just. Oh yeah, no, we haven't discussed that yet. Yeah. <laughs> Don't undermine me, Neo. Bite me. Already with this. Already with the bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything goes right. bloopers. It's a live stream. Yeah, That's just true. go with it. Okay, question two. Do I need to reread it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first? One with being okay. the winning the Boston Championship Wrestling Global Championship. Literally the week or two before winning the wild card tournament with NCW right here. Oh wow. Um so what what um Fed was did you win that Boston championship in? You just you just explained your question you just answered your own question. Basically BCW Boston oh, Championship gotcha. Wrestling. Okay. Alright, well I don't know. I don't watch BCW. Exactly. All right. Um, so question three. Chill, guys. Question three. What were your major influences to join Ka? Joining, well, literally, I joined because CM Puma uploaded a video like with the whole, do you want your creative superstar to be a part of my show? We'll upload it with the tags, this and this, and I'll DM you if you got if you got in. Okay. Uh I mean, that must have been pretty big because Puma, known in the core community as a big YouTube star, and that he yeah. went out and selected you to be a part of his roster, must have been yeah, huge cool. for you, for a no-name yeah. to be selected. Yep, it was. <laughs> Short and sweet. I think so. Right. Um, so question four, what were your thoughts on your NCW debut? I think he went quiet. His mic's messing up. Yeah. I, I think lost. <laughs> I know I lost my debut. I mean, it was a long <laughs> time ago. You were a rookie. You were tanned. But you were ready to face up the world. 
It was literally last year. I can't remember what I did for breakfast. <laughs> well, <laughs> I need to go get the footage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> go get the footage. Man. I know I lost on. It was on live. I know that. Well, but even yeah. though you lost, you look good in defeat. Not to mention that you were also learning your mistakes because. If I remember correctly, you were trying to hit the power bomb right next to the ropes. That I'm was not the pay per view, my first pay per view, actually. Yeah, but you were still hitting power bombs near the ropes. But yeah. ultimately, you changed your finishing move from those mistakes into what we now know as the Love Implosion. And some other people know it as the Romance Bomb. Romance Bomb, Love, love Implosion. Yeah, no. We did a vote on that. I won. <laughs> But also, because you, you, you always get your way. Yeah, I always get my way. But also, let's talk about other debuts. GPW, GCA, two big companies that everyone know about. What were your debuts like in those companies? Man, uh, in GPW, I lost my debut. <laughs> oh wow! That's a starter. Good start. Good start. Well, in GCA, I won my debut. Who was your debut against? Shit. Do you remember at all? <laughs> nope. It's, it's fine if you don't, because I not many people do remember their debuts in a losing fashion, but yeah. ultimately, even though you lost your debuts, you still came out as one of the writers, fastest rising stars of 2019. Yeah, most definitely. Going but from look. pure obscurity to no... Literally... But I was from obscurity. <laughs> but let's talk about your first big major match in NCW, taking on a veteran named Jeez in your first pay-per-view match. Basically, the show opener. Yeah. Even though you did lose to him, you did put on a hell of a fight against another heavyweight at your size. It was. And and yeah, and Jeez is not an easy competitor to beat. No, absolutely not. Surprised that guy's not a future world champion or a former world champion at that point. But the week prior to that match, you teamed up with Alex Wolf, and on stream on episode live, it basically became natural romance birth. But at that time, we didn't expect it to become as successful as it did. Yeah. What were your thoughts of you guys basically being two random guys never interacted? Going into the wildcard tag team tournament. And to be uh, honest, I thought it was just gonna be a one-off thing with him. I didn't even think we would advance to the semifinals. Hell, not even the finals. But the fact yeah. we had won the whole tournament was like, holy fuck. Not to mention, you guys I'll, did I'll, come out of nowhere. Sure. Yeah, a big one. But not to mention, also, tag team. You think that was what got Natural Romance on the map? Possibly. They they were one hell, like one tough competitors. Oh yeah, that rivalry went team. all the way through 2019 over those World Tag Team titles. Yep. Also, the match after the Wildcard Tag Team Tournament, four straight matches, but you guys did not wait. You did not let that momentum slow down. You went straight. For the new tag team champions, French War, in a 30 minute Iron Man tag match, which some could say was a brilliant match. It really definitely put out the best on both teams. Fuck it. Alright, keep going. This is real shit. You don't make these. <laughs> Damn technical. Who let Spike backstage again? Yeah, it was yeah, it was fucking a good 30 minutes in that tag match. Oh, yeah. That's a big match. That's a big match for, for a new tag team. Not to mention, <laughs> um, French the War, they that... went through war to get those tag team titles from the next generation. So, both of you guys were kind of brutalized, but you still managed to put on a really, really good match. How did that feel for you guys? Like, how well you can work together and if you ever want to fight those guys again? Fuck. <laughs> and uh, it could happen in the wild card. Just... Yeah, it could. We're I just gone. work with everything and everyone. Make the most out of it. 
exactly. You made a lot out of that tag team run with Alex. Yeah. yeah I mean, sure. to the point that um, you and Alex even attempted to do what has been so far the impossible, hold two tag titles at the same time. So you went along mm -hmm. and teamed up with Jade and Shadow. How was that to team up with someone outside of Natural Romance, something yeah. you've never teamed with to challenge I also got a, not only the um, veterans of NCW, but also the tag team champions at that time? Yeah, I got to I gotta add to that too. Um, so you teaming up with Jane Shadow was in a match against me, David Cassidy, and DJ Young. That was fucking blood and war. Oh, 60 minutes of pure chaos and anarchy. Yeah. That was so, definitely so, brutal. So I got to ask you this question since in, initially I was the one who kind of started this. How did you <laughs> feel about me calling out you and the rest of the roster? To be just, fair, just, I'm, just because I'm, we didn't know each other at the time. Yeah, at the time I'm like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> kind of a Gregor gift right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck That's is it. this guy? <laughs> I didn't know you were a veteran, so I just I didn't take your shit seriously. A lot of yeah. people were exactly the same. Jade and Shadow mainly thought that hey, Tony's not a veteran because he's been doing it quote unquote longer, even though Tony's been in was in NCW for three years. Get on my level. Jade is not the sharpest tool. We no remember this. Mm. Yes, we're aware. We are we are fully aware. But the fact is that Jaden stepped up to the veterans of the group, and you and Alex just basically jumped on for the ride to see how far you could go. Ultimately, yeah. that kind of, that's that you both of you's, up to, or all three of you's, I should say, to that next level above the tag yeah, team division. Definitely. Yeah. You, you guys definitely got a, a lot of recognition after that. Um, you, you, even Jaden. And I hate to say that, but definitely put you guys on the map for sure. Literally after that Iron Man match, shows were hitting up me and Alex joined their shows to take over the tag division. So would you say the stuff you did in NCW helped with uh, the following Putting you guys on the map? Shows? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> We proved in, within NCW we could dominate the tag division. Other shows that wanted to challenge challenge us to see if we could dominate theirs. Sure enough, we did for the most part. How many tag titles did you end up winning? Fuck. That's... <laughs> Time to do my research on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys won about eight or nine tag team titles within four months. Oh, wow. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Fuck, I lost count. <laughs> Two, you won a lot. We'll just say you won a lot. Like at least nine or ten. Yeah. Around that's... there. For a new tag team, that's good. That's, yeah, exactly. That's, more than, that's, that's like, great. That's super you impressive. You think about the tag great. teams that have been around for years that take that long to win ten titles. You guys did it in a handful of months across yeah. multiple companies. That's just tag team basically so, revived in what we do. So would you would you call yourself kind of a tag team specialist? You can say that. Yeah, but you would you consider yourself one, or would you just kind of brush it off and? Or more consider Alex was the one behind the whole tag team wrestling, due to the fact he was partners with Dustin, um, Omari, just uh, Omari, like all them. You believe that it could have been more Alex than you at that time? Well, considering I was the reason we won the tournament. Oof, going heel already. Wow. <laughs> hey, um, okay. And how I pinned Franco for the second to win this tag titles the second time. Mm. So you you would say it's you then? You'd say it's it was all you? It was most mainly even shit, but at the end, whoever was there in the ring just did the the last call. Okay. Well, technically, so, equal parts. Yeah. Yeah, you can like all over Twitter. People are saying Alex is the one carrying it. No, I'm the one. 
and others are saying I was the one carrying it. Was, we just pulled both of them wrong. Was that was that what ultimately started forcing a wedge into natural romance? Like no. we're like you guys are focused on the tag team wrestling, but everyone else was trying to split you guys up, saying that yeah. you're the reason for the tag team success, or it was Alex that was the reason for it. How how did you go so long against the heat? Of everyone just trying to break up natural romance. How did you guys stay together? I guess would be the question. All I can say is the critics are basically jealous people that wish that the success me and Alex had. Well, like Seth Rollins says, critics are only people who can't be leaders because they're scared. Basically. Okay. Um, All right. Let's well, talk question about. Question seven. Let's first. Let's talk about NCW Invincible, where you and Alex challenged for the Intercontinental Title, defended the World Tag Team Titles, and challenged for the Six Man Tag Titles all in the same night. But you left with no gold in your hands. Was that because you may have overestimated your capabilities, or is it because you teamed up with Jaden Shadow, who had four matches that night? Jesus Christ. Uh, I admit, we may have gotten greedy on that <laughs> that night. Well, I, is, I may have. Why is done in GTA? What, what, would, you, would you say it was a humbling hold, hold, experience? Hold on, hold on. Why the fuck are we what? sitting here? Let's go fuck shit up. Hold on. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, interview's moving. <laughs> Interview on the road. <laughs> All right, who's driving? Who's driving? Hello. Well, you're supposed to be the interviewer, so... Well, yeah, so you want me to drive or you want me to ask questions? Ask questions. Yeah. Alright, I'll sit the, I'll sit in the back seat then. Alright, who, 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 whose car are we taking? I got the tank. <laughs> you got the tank? I got a Kuruma. Um, I got the tank. Wait, can all, can all of us fit in the tank? I think people yeah. need to Yo. see you, you Lance, but either way, Yo. let's keep this uh, conversation rolling. All-Stars Tournament... I'll Oh, fuck. <laughs> Let's talk about the All-Stars hey. tournament for a bit. Lamps, get in the front. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh. Yeah, you guys get in the back of whatever. But let's talk about the All-Stars tournament for a second. For hey, four months, you guys out. were dominating the tag team division. How did it feel to go back to singles wrestling after such a long period of time? To do such an elite tournament? It felt fucking weird at first. Mainly because there was someone in the corner I could tag in and out. But it was... Yeah. Not to mention the fact for four months you held those World Tag Team titles. And people I, didn't really recognize it, you without your gold. Yep. Yeah. But I think you ranked fifth in your bracket? I was, oh, I was in the middle fifth. For, yeah, you still ended on a positive no, but you didn't win the tournament. But neither did Alex. Yeah, but he came close. He came. He got into the finals before losing to Angel Ramirez. So, you watching yeah. backstage, how did it feel knowing Alex could have main evented Chaos Mania three? That your tag team partner, the guy that you thought saw as an equal, was slowly moving his singles career ahead of you. I mean, how is that bad as long as we both had success in our own right and then success as a tag team? Why would I be upset over it? Well, there's some people who do get upset. Triple H, Randy Orton type thing. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> or The Shield. They say they yeah. care about, you know, the success of their teammates, but deep down they kind of resent them that it could have been, or it should have been, their opportunity. That's but true. ultimately, you didn't see it like that, which mad respects to you that you put the team's benefits over your own. So let's go hit up the uh, nightclub. Um. Oh, what the fuck, Neil? All yeah. right, cops. How did we get five stars? Them. Uh, wait, five stars? What the fuck? Get in the car. Get in the car. Oh, God. I'm in the car. Oh God. 
You die, you lose. Uh, yeah, you can't do the interview anymore if you die. What's up, Dio? How's it going? Yeah, <laughs> fuck you. Why is, why is the guy we're interviewing driving? I don't know, the same reason why we have five stars the second we left the fucking building. Alright, well, I mean, let, let's continue this interview. Okay, so question seven. Uh, what was it like winning the GCA Commonwealth Championship? I take it this isn't a social call. I honestly thought I was gonna win that title, to be honest. My match against Evan TNT, who was the Sorry, champ at no. the time. We put on a good okay, back then. and forth series wow. of matches, but mostly I was dominating, surprisingly, considering I was like a new guy there. Mm -hmm. And he, he, before me, he was the longest reigning champion. And GCA history. So basically, passing off the torch. Wow. That's, that's ba yeah, pretty much passing off the torch. Alright. I just uh, turned down the volume because it's too annoying. Right. Yeah. Alright, so, um, this, this question kind of, kind of, is kind of like, um, it's just asking us how Alpha was born and what was the process of choosing members? Like, did you guys that's have first day? Okay. Why don't you explain that to us? If, if you ever get an interview with Alex, he may agree on this for the most part. He may but... be a future guest, but we're not saying no to that. Yeah. Like, originally, yeah. like before Alpha was created, Alex had that in mind with me for like, even when we were the NCW Tag Champs. It was like a long time th thought process. Uh -huh. And before we even get that even started, Another person wanted us in their stable, which we had agreed and shit. Blah blah blah. We were in. We, we, were, we had we this. Asked the stable? What stable it was, or we'll keep them anonymous. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty That's sure fair. there was like two or three people who wanted you to do, join their faction, that they wanted the success of Natural Romance, and you were basically, we don't want to be held down by a faction that's already been recognized. We want to be our own thing. Yeah. Okay, um, so uh, why don't you continue on the original question? So yeah, he asked us to join his stable. We're like, sure, whatever. For about two months, Alex and I started wondering, when the fuck is this gonna start? Because we haven't done shit at all. Yeah. Like, I, like him and I understand the whole the outside life of car and shit, being busy. But it was just ridiculous. We had no logo, no, like, nothing. Yeah. All we had was just the name, which I don't remember at the top, at the top of my head. We were just yeah. in this group chat for two months doing nothing. Like we just never got, sh he just never got shit started doing or working. And then that's why Alex kind of just stepped up and said, "Hey, Lance, let's make our own faction." Yep. And then what are Alpha? So, so how did you choose the name Alpha? That's more of an Alex question. <laughs> oh, I will really save it for him. Yeah, so how about choosing members? How did that go? Um, well, did you guys already have them picked out? As we were like in the process oh, of thinking, think, like thinking about making the stable, we came oh. across the duo of Chance Nightwalker and Caleb James, along with Demented, you could say them as a trio, okay. called Project Blackout at the time, over at Ultimate Wrestling World. Myself, Alex fought against Caleb and, Sh and Demented for their set of tag titles on the first show. It was a good back and forth. They knew how to shit talk like we did. So we thought, Alex thought, why not have them a part of the, the group and we? And ultimately, they're still OGs of that group of uh, yeah, Alpha. So, so that yeah. was like the original five. Yeah. And then cool. next was Yuri. Kato, now Yuri Rojo, and Austin Collins, but both of them were members of a previous faction, Anarchy and Reckless and Ten. Yep. So Indeed. how did you convince them to join, to leave Reckless yeah. and uh, Anarchy and, then, and join Alpha? And then also, what what was the, like, did you get any backlash for, for taking these guys from another stable, or? Not that I know of from the backlash, but... Them joining was more of the fact that they weren't really doing much in those stables, like Reckless and Alpha. Yeah. So I told them, join Reckless us and we'll get, you, we'll get you up more. 
Okay. And ultimately, and so, it kind of did because Austin Collins went on to become the King of the Ring champion from beating Jaden Shadow, and Yuri and became a multi-time US, US champion. Yep. So ultimately, so, Alpha did lead him to be more successful. Yep. All right, and then so once Yuri and Austin were involved, um, next I think, trio well, I was think, the Bounty Hunters, I believe. Yeah, I think that was when. Um, uh, uh, the bounty hunters joined David, um, yeah. Joey, and I. David was the one asking that me and Alex to join. Yeah. I just David, David hit you guys up. What did did you know David previous to this, or what was your what was your thought on on David? I was skeptical at first, but I always said like Alex since Alex was the one that created that had the thought idea first. He was the one that called the shots, like who joined or not, and he gave the green light for you guys to join. But it could have been also another respect issue, like, hey, yeah. me and David, we fought in the A block of the All Stars tournament. Sure, I beat him, but he gave me a hell of a fight. Maybe yeah. that's something we need a part of Alpha as well. This heavy hitting hardcore icon, along with Thank a multi-time world that. champion and the heart and soul of NCW. Yeah. Just these three outlaw guys who can throw hands. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was kind of a surprise to be in a stable with you and Alex. Um, <laughs> just because wow. I, I didn't even, like, after our match, didn't even think you guys, uh, still didn't think you guys knew who the fuck I was. So it was, it was surprising to be a part of it, but at the same time, it was really fun. Yeah. All that shit talking. Yeah, it was, the confidence. No, it was definitely a good time in Alpha. I, w yeah. I will say that. Alright, so... Was there any other members nine. that we're forgetting about? Yeah, yeah. Any, any, any Alex's members? brothers, Dustin and oh, Jester. We pretty much know why they would have oh, joined. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, they were... Uh, they were basically they loyal to Alex. Still are. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, should we move on from that? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, question nine. What was your match like against uh, CM Puma? Basically, this guy who brought you into core, and now you get to fight your icon, your idol, the man who yeah. s essentially you gave you a from that first opportunity. You could say it was like a trainer versus student match. Yeah. Since you're the first. one that brought me here. Yeah. And everything. This I wanted to prove that. that brought you in, basically. What? My success has done with his in his hands. Therefore, the match happened. Just wanting to prove how much of a success I've been because of him, and how much dominant I became as a person. All right, and then basically we were talking uh, about your GCA Commonwealth title. How does yeah, it feel now to like, be the longest reigning champion? Maybe Queen. If not, you're getting there, for sure. Oh yeah. Um, for sure. What is it now, at 244 days? I won that title, the championship, in May 19th. And now it's January 2020, you're slowly moving on to nine months now, almost a year with that title. What will yep. it be like if you can hold that GCA Commonwealth title for a total of 365 days? I could say... I could, I could pull the whole, I'm the best champion because I held it this long. You we could, got a, um, could, uh, rightfully so. We got a question from, uh, Brendan Ace. Ask about All him right. about his previous match against Michael Carter in GPW. I'm assuming he's talking about the superplex that broke the ring. That was a good fucking match, I'm not gonna lie. Are we ever gonna see it in NCW? That's if you book it. <laughs> yeah, Neo, get on that shit. <laughs> well, Michael Carter's kind of too focused on the, uh, you know, hardcore title. So. Hardcore title, yeah. You know, maybe he becomes hardcore champion. Maybe he calls out Lance. Oh hell yeah! Let's I mean, that. would that be something you'd want to do? Go for the hardcore title? Possibly. I mean, it would complete a. It would complete, um... Well, no, he needs a big card title for the Grand Slam. He's already oh, yeah, got the live title. Well, I mean, it would add it would add to your repertoire of championship wins, you know? Yeah. 
fleshy. Alright, so... Question 10. What was your first Chaos Mania like? The and triple threat like between the... Anarchy and Reckless and... Yeah, the war yeah. yeah, the faction wolf. Holy fuck, that city was huge. No. Oh. <laughs> and then... What was it like winning the NCW Live title? I didn't even think I would get that championship, to be fair. Like, the live title just going under a new ruling, basically the champion calls out the challenges or someone calls out the champion. Kyle Pierce yeah. went out of his way to call you out. Which Ultimately, you guys had a good feud cool. over that live title, but your first single, or your second singles title opportunity, I think it was your first title opportunity for a singles title in a one-on-one. -on -one. And you basically dominated that whole match to win the live title. Well, no, this it? was your your first title, your single singles title. title in MCW, right? Mm -hmm. After winning two tag That's titles, the live tag, I mean, not the live tag tournament, the wildcard wild tag tournament, card. your first singles piece of gold, and you were just about to head into the Rookies Cup. How are you feeling knowing that this Rookies Cup or well, this live title could have been what got you. What was I fucking trying to say? Like, this live title is basically could did it boost your um, chances of getting in? I'd say that, but I would already say that you were going to be in the tournament already after you know winning the tag titles, winning the wild card, basically being one of half of the most dominating tag teams of that season. But I was more saying. Did winning the live title boost your confidence going into a tournament with basically the best of the best of the season, like Jane and Shadow, K Dog, Alex Wolf, Tom Doyle, Yuri Kato, Austin. Oh wait, was Austin in there? Sinistrad. Yeah, Sinistrad, Franco, Bullet. All these Alex. high level rookies who made success out of their careers in NCW season three. You are a part of the top 16. How did that make you feel? going in as a champion. It was a feel-good moment winning that title to begin with. Just the fact that I could win gold on my own without having the tag partner around me. Yeah, you didn't need someone like, to help you. Like, I knew I could get the job done on my own. Like, that feel-good moment. And as I mentioned, while you were live champion, you basically broke through every round of that tournament. Yeah. Beating even Alex Wolf and Yuri, a part of Alpha in the semifinals and finals. Yeah, let's yep. let's talk about your match with Alex in the Rookies Cup. What, what was that like for you? Fuck. That, that you guys were like the best of friends, but yeah. never what competed like against the, each other. So what was it like you're, to basically face like your brother in a way. It was a tough one to be honest. Just the fact that him and I never really fought at each other at all. It was like the very first time. Yeah. And it has it's such a stipulation on that match. Yep. This that could have been like a Chaos Mania worthy match. Oh, I'm sure it's gonna go down a Chaos Mania one year or another. I think it needs it. For a title. Uh -huh. I definitely think it needs to. I okay. thought it would be me and Alex in the finals, to be, to be honest with you. That, that, hey, that would have been a, that would have been a good finals for sure. Yeah. But that's just how yeah. the brackets went. Yeah. Exactly. Um, alright, so, um, speaking of matches, um, you called out Tom Doyle at, uh, NCW Shoutout. What, how yeah. did you feel about that match, and what, what are your thoughts on your opponent? The fact that Shadow was calling someone out, I took that sh as an opportunity to actually get that world title before Diesel B, who won the rookie versus veteran match. Which was the number mm -hmm. one contenders for the world title at the N3. You basically had three weeks to get yourself to that event, to yep. be where you wanted to be after that rookie's cup. I don't want to risk not being left, I don't want to risk being left out of that. I mean, you were technically the live champion and one half of the wildcard tag team champions. 
I don't know if he would have been left out of that show. Yeah, someone would have called you out for your chance to lose. Like, the opportunity. Like, there's a the slight chance that I could have lost both titles before then. Yeah. yeah. That's also a true fact. I mean, you did lose the Wildcard Tag Titles for a weekend during the uh, Rookie Slash Veterans Cup tournament to yeah. Jaden and K Dog. That Alex got pinned, but let's take that. Let's move on forward with that. People make mistakes yeah, in tag matches. You got back. the battles back. Became two time Wildcard Tag Champs. Yep. So uh, let's talk about the match itself with Tom Boyd. That was fucking awesome. Just how so you like competed the end of in two one hour Iron Man matches previously, but they were both tag matches. You might not have had the stamina to go the full into a 60 man Iron Man match, right? That's, 60 that's minutes. 60 minute, 60 minute Iron Man match with Tom Doyle. Like, how do you go into it? That's a huge match to prepare for. Yeah. Though I was in a ta tag team Iron Man matches, I knew for the fact, like, we each didn't have a tag partner, so, so it proved that I could focus on Doyle more, getting more pins and, like, all that, deal damage on him within the time frame, without yeah. having to, like, look, look back at my partner or the opponent's partner. Like, exactly, you've been in three one-hour Iron Man matches that in season three. A six-man yeah. tag, a world tag, and a one-on-one -on -one match. What was the difference between the three Iron Man matches? Just the fact that those I matches, mean, the tag matches, I had to rely on my tag partner not getting pinned in the process. I mean, some people actually called you the Iron Man of NCW at one point because of how many Iron Man matches you competed in in that one season. I yep. think with I think you spent the most time in a ring in NCW Season 3. Like, in an Iron Man match? No, like, I mean in just minutes in general, because you yeah. had 30 minute Iron Man matches, you had 30 minute matches, you had 1 hour Iron Man matches. Your single matches went within 15 minutes each. Yeah. I mean, unless you, like, hated Jaden and then squashed him. Fucking like second quarter fine the second quarter match. <laughs> that was like a five minute match. It's crunch. Bye bye neck. But anyway, at the end of the oh, day oh. of that one hour Iron Man match, you were uh, awarded with something only one other person had ever done. And that is win two single titles at the same time. But also being a part of the wildcard tag team champions, making you the second person in history to hold three titles at the same time but the only the first person to hold two single titles with a tag title how did that make you yep. feel to be kind of in the history Quite book so to speak if i wanted to do something i'll do it at the, risk of, at the risk of your life title you challenged for the world title that was pretty ballsy all but doyle to accept the challenge was surprising it was all or nothing pretty much double or nothing a true meaning behind that. You know the saying, go big or go home. And that was the biggest yeah. Lance Roman Scott at that time, winning the World Heavyweight title. That Was that your first World Championship since the dawn of Lance Romance? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Smooth. Okay, can you repeat that? Because I was focused on crashing was, into it. Was that the first world championship you've, you've ever won since since becoming Lance Romance? Nope. So, so what was the first world championship you've ever won? The global title. Okay. So In which well, company was that? BCW. BCW. Ah, oh. uh, okay. Wait, BCW global championship. That sounds like the GCA global title. Maybe they have the same names, who knows? Maybe. Right. I know, people um, say global instead of world for some weird reason. True. Um, Alright, so question 13. How did you feel moving into a solo run? I just felt like I was in the top of the world, top of the mountain. Like I could get shit done. Like you could do it on your own and you didn't need that. Basically. 
Okay. And then let's talk about your first main event as world champion taking on Dizzle B. You went in knowing <laughs> Diz beat you in the rookie vs veterans finals. So how did it feel going into a rematch knowing that you guys didn't have like a previous match before two previous matches beforehand like he had to fight Corvo and then he had to defend his six man tag team titles where on your side it was you had to beat Yuri and then defend your live championship against Kyle Pierce in a two out of three falls match how did it know that this like you guys didn't have anything holding you back and that you were going to go full force at each other in the main event of your first pay per view Actually, it was like the yeah, second main event. What? Third, if you count the wild card special, but... <laughs> yeah, so how did you go into that match? Especially on such a big stage. Mm. I yeah, three is one of the big pay I knew that he'd beaten me before, and I wanted to show that that ain't happening again, whatever it took. That it so wasn't you, happening. You, you wanted to avenge your loss to this little Yes. Yeah. It was much more than a title match than an end of the year's match for me. It was more of redemption from that loss, like you said. And that uh, you said you were willing to do whatever it took. That basically could have been it because Dizzle B was dominating you during that match, using that veteran experience against you. But you took a veteran page and went for a roll-up that won the match. Yep. Controversial thing, by the way. Not, not controversial. controversial. It's no, a roll up. It, it, but still, it was a roll up. Mm. Like, we've never seen a world title there. match end in that fashion before. It's always yeah, in the middle like, of the ring. Someone got tapped out, someone got knocked out, someone got pinned. But we've never seen it end via a roll up like that. I mean, yeah, it is. But, but people don't just get rolled up in the main event and that's it. Like, we oh, usually that's see. Oh, for getting in that position. Yeah, <laughs> he got. He got the Corbin treatment. Maybe his that roll up caused him to take a small hiatus. So I think it's because this will be is now back in 2020 and it's the fact that he got embarrassed. May yeah, maybe maybe he got did a feel embarrassed. Lost maybe. to a, a rookie by roll up in the main event for the world title. That's but you guys are one for one, so we could see that tiebreaker somewhere down the line. Yeah, Maybe. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Seeing, seeing one more. Hey there. All right. Um, move on to question fifteen. Question <laughs> fifteen. Uh, what was your thought process on leaving Alpha, and then after you left, you formed Diffuse with Maximus? How did that all piece together? The whole Diffuse is more than an alliance. Okay. Well, that's team, but partnership. Yeah. So what? So what was the thought process on leaving Alpha first? Uh, that could, that one can be. Like, what made you want to leave, and what any tension between you and Alex or any nah, anyone else no before you left? There wasn't tension. So you just decided that yeah. it, you wanted to branch out on your own. Yeah. Okay. Was that maybe the winning the world title? Maybe was that a signal that you didn't need anyone to, you didn't need this large faction to be a part of? Because people were saying that no one knew about Alpha until Land stepped into that spotlight of being a world champion. Yeah, yeah. And considering because I was a part of Alpha, I basically watched all this go down. How did you feel as it all went down? Um. Ooh, question well, on the question. Well, yeah, I was I was a little upset just due to the fact that we were, you know, losing losing a member, losing a brother of ours. But at the same time, um, if if someone is being successful on their own, can't hold them back just because of a just because you know you're all on a team together. You have to let them go sometimes. And your solo run was was doing great. You were doing good on your own. You were winning championships, bringing championships home constantly, but it's, you know, sometimes you have to just let let your friends go and be on their own. Yeah. Austin said he was chilling in um, Alpha pretty much while this was all going down. He but legit was. He legit was. But also, but, a lot of people might have found it disrespectful to, like, 
Alex and the rest of Alpha because you basically went from this brotherhood that you formed with him to basically joining this alliance with Max Maximus. So yeah, a lot of people may so have found that out of left field and more yeah. disrespectful towards so that, what kind of got that you to hit. that main event level. Yeah, so that kind of hit us out of left field when that happened. And I'd actually really like to know how how this all got started and what what did you what, how did you take the backlash you got from forming Diffuse after you just left Alpha? The, the surprising factor was I didn't get backlash from you. You didn't. Really? No. There was no why lands why? Or... Yeah. Nope. No, no one. The only people that were saying that were Alpha. Okay. Well, and you, honestly, and David. Oh, okay. uh -huh. Like the other members, they didn't really take. Like, it was my decision. Like, they weren't. They weren't gonna hold me back. Okay. Well, his his uh, quote from Brendan A. He said, "I didn't. I didn't really find it disrespectful because." I've seen faction members leave all the time as part of the wrestling business. That's yeah, exactly. that's true. Very much is. I mean, look at. I don't know. Maybe I mean, at look the at time, Randy Orton. He's been a part of Rated RKO, Evolution, Legacy, Legacy, true. Wyatt's. Exactly. And then you've also got people like CM Punk, who's had the Straight Edge Society, Nexus. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So it is a so, true fact that people do use factions to get upper in upper, like yeah. more opportunities and you know get more successful instead of running on your own. Of course. So that's probably why um, there's so many factions in what we do in cool. Yeah, probably just to get people over and so no one's left behind, I guess. Yep. Um. So this is kind of, this kind of leads into the next question. What was it like teaming with uh, Spike Masters? Something Tony knows so well. I, I know it very well. <laughs> How the fuck did you manage that? Um, I was in a different place in my career. A very dark place. Yes. Well, like just able to like coexist with him, like just well, like like well, get along. See, okay. Well, well, you see that. Whenever Spike and I face, I always come out on top. So there's obviously, obviously something I have over this guy, Robert. and maybe that's maybe that's what controlled him, in in the fact of us teaming together. Maybe just, I just the amount of respect habits. that Spike may have had for Tony. Maybe. I but, just let the, I just well, let him look havoc. Yeah. So, but let's just yeah. Let's <laughs> you are not there. wrong. Let's, what he did with the what he did in that live tag title triple threat match was pretty much oh definitely fucking yeah. annihilation to the human race. Spike, Spike definitely came in hot when he first came back and fucked a lot of things up. Yep. Um, he definitely chose a good partner. I can tell you this: I I was prepared to choose him until I found out you chose him already. <laughs> I mean, that's just a that's just a betting card you. You need to take. Sure, yeah. what Spike's been around four years. He's dangerous, but somehow yeah. he's been nothing but tag team wrestling. So now that he's kind of going out on his own now after the whole Lance romance incident, is that terrifying? That there's nothing stopping him from bringing that havoc. Obviously. Yeah. How how do you feel that that Spike is now out on his own and could possibly want a piece of you? I mean, there's no stopping him. There's no stopping me. Had to be a collision for the ages. Lance Romance vs. Spike Masters. So if he if he challenged you, if he openly challenged you, would you accept? Fuck it. Would Why you not? ever defend your GCA Commonwealth title against Spike Masters? I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a fair point. You're smart in that point. Yeah, you're smart. All right, so that kind of leads into the next question uh, involving me. Uh, what did you think of our feud? How was the feuding with me? Just the fact that our world title match, I thought more like he got one he's a lucky win on me. There's no yeah, way this has so, been. So, yeah, so, so, so let's start from the beginning. 
Um, I got a shot against you. I'm not too sure how it came al came along. I did nothing to well, that tag match, you and I. Well, basically, Lentens was focused on defending his title against Doyle and, and Jade Shadow, which you successfully yeah. did, defending both both times on episode one and episode three. Yep. However, during that time, we were building up the live tag team title match between you, Alpha, and Tony and a mysterious partner, which we later found out it was Eddie Knight. Eddie Knight. Yeah. Yep. So we basically, because in season four, we hadn't seen Alex at that time, so Alex basically arrived to defend the titles on live, so we did a one-on-one -on -one match between you and Tony. But the stipulation was, if Tony won that match, he would later go on to challenge you for the yep. World Tag Team, uh, World Heavyweight Championship. And before you get into that match, I went into this match fully expecting not to win. I was, I was, I was, it to win. I, I was in a, I was in a, I, I, in my opinion, I feel like I was in a slump. Um, so in this match, I was like, I'm probably not going to win, but hey, I get to face this guy one on one. Yeah. With carry on you. But ultimately, Tony did win that match. Like, even though yeah. you, one didn't expect to win and the other did, but that did set up the main event of our first pay per view. However, yes. Lance had been dominant throughout that entire month up to the pay per view, so defeating the David Cassidy, Joey Hartman, defending the live tag titles against David and Bullet. Like, you were unstoppable for this period of time, not to mention tagging with Maximus to beat the Bounty Hunters in multiple tag matches. Yeah. Basically clean sweeping Tony, Joey, and David. Yep. Hold up, he didn't clean, he clean sweep me in tag team matches. Now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So you're going into this pay-per-view with a lot of momentum yeah, you, and all the gold, and your opponent's going in with high. nothing. You were running pretty high going into this. Exactly. So, yeah, what was your thought process on going into this feud, beating me multiple times in tag matches, beating my partners, um, in and tag you know, and one-on-one -on -one matches? Yeah, and, and basically knowing being draped and cold. Like the... I just felt more confident to have a better shot on beating you. Okay. Did you, did you think did you think my first win over you was a fluke? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Oof. Right. I respect Five-time world champion still a fluke. I respect it. I mean, that's, that's how you feel, you know? But after that main event battle, you guys put on a hell of a show. Did, yeah. did that get respect from you that, hey, Tony didn't beat me on a fluke the first time? That this guy is actually on that level of where I am right now? For sure, the, the respect was there. Came out after that match. Yeah. Regard regardless of how you felt about my partners, because during yeah. this build up, there was an issue between you and my and one of my tag partners. I'm sure we'll talk about <laughs> that in the uh, Tony interview if that ever happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a interview for another time. But um, yeah. So leading up to this, uh, we I feel like we both had mutual respect, but yeah. you did think I had a fluke win, but then after. Um, I think it was just mainly respect between both of us. Yeah. And also, you lost the the live tag titles. Like, how, to, how did that feel? Really? To well, two men to that you beat in title. single action. Jesus Christ! You know, it's <laughs> drove it to a propane tank. I'm surprised it didn't blow up. Yeah, same. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> I was, the live tag title, the most live tag title match. I wanted to get more of a like a thought process of the world title match, more of a workout, like a strategy. That hence why I was eliminated first. Okay. Basically, so you, you needed really, that warm up, and that was the best way to were, do it. So, yeah. were you were you concerned at all about losing those titles, or was it was did it you really not. care? Was it, really was it part of the game plan to lose the live tag titles? Yeah. So if you were to walk, so if you were to walk in NC NCW reset, lose the tag titles, but win the world titles, you wouldn't be upset. Nah. Of course not. 
the world title is what everyone should be gunning for in NCW or any company. So to lose one title to win or retain the top title, I think it's a well thought out sacrifice. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I actually kind of want to mention this. At recent, I kind of did the, the opposite of what happened to you. I won a tag in, <laughs> in the world. So after so after the the pay per view, you lost you lost uh, both titles. What was what was going through your mind when that happened? Like going into twenty twenty with nothing around your waist. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. That's kind of what a card is going through now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this so, is a rebuild phase. So 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 losing both titles, you just kind of you brush it off. You know, win some, lose some. Yeah. So, going into 2020, what are your career goals now? And with all that, and, and G, GCA and GPW and NCW. Make in GCA, make sure I stay as the longest reigning Commonwealth champion. Okay. Check. At any cost, win that NCW World Title again because I do have my rematch still. Technically, yep. And become the GPW champ by winning tonight's number one contendership. Um, this is the number one at the air's day. You were kind of counting out on that one, but. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, <laughs> what I got from that was Lancer Man's putting everyone on notice in GPW that yeah. after tonight's main event, he will become the deserving number one contender. Yes. For the Come GPW the Heavyweight way. Championship. Yes. Okay. That that's a shout out to uh, that's a shout out against Michael Carter and the other person in that matchup. Yeah. I, what is it, Mason? Big, big, Mason something. Big. Steel something. I think. Mason. There's a lot Steel. of Masons that are in GPW. That's a fair point. We got a lot of Tonys in NCW. We do. Tony O'Ryan, Tony Moon, Tony Lee Williams, so on and so forth. For oh, fuck. <laughs> no one tells me this. Maybe you um, should pay attention, okay, well, but either way. But let's talk about your guys' next encounter with each other, probably potentially, at Overload yeah. for the six-man tag team titles. The fact that fam um, the family is getting the first opportunity at the wildcard event. But also, yeah. well, if the bounty so hunters you... survive the family, this hidden member of the family that no one's seen yet in NTW. I don't yeah. even know about that guy. No, no one does. He's a mystery. He's a mystery unless you're a member of the family. So going into your match at Overload, um, depending on who you have to face, especially because we don't even know your third partner. So how, what? What do you? How do you feel about this? Like, how do you? How do you feel you're gonna? You're gonna last in in this match? Whether you have to face the bounty hunters or whether you have to face uh, the family. I, I, we all I know is the family and the Fuse have the surprising mystery partner. Exactly, I feel like the champions that. are the ones with the back against the wall. True, but I mean, you'll have a mystery partner going into NCW Overload. We won't know, I'm guessing, until then. Waylon Pierce will at least see him at and Wildcard. So they right? lose, if they do win the yeah. six-man tag team titles, they do give up the um, surprise factor that the Fuse will still hold going into Overload. Yeah. So we still, we, we won't even know who your partner is until Overload. Which, which is, is still kind of, two, it's three giving weeks you away. an advantage. Yeah. It's giving you somewhat of an advantage. But, but at um, the same time, it, you still don't know who your opponents are going to be. But also, like, Lance, you, so you could be close to making history again at Overload <laughs> by becoming the first ever man to hold the World Tag Team Championships the wildcard tag team championships, the live tag team championships, and the six man tag team championships. Tony's okay. only behind you was... on the live I've tag held... team titles. No, I've held those, remember? No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 yes, 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 no. No, yes, no, you held the wildcard wild card. tag titles, left Alpha, and, the live. and then the live, tag was, the live tag titles came into play. Basically, I changed to the live when I was still in alpha, though. No, 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 they didn't. Yes, they did. 
They were still technically the wild card. Nope. That ruined us. Whatever, we're doing an interview. <laughs> we're doing an interview. We don't have time to argue. Alright. <laughs> Lan- I, Okay, I said Lance won. You were kind of handed the wild card. Whatever. Still, <laughs> still champion. Still count it on my record. So Austin and fucking Yuri could also count it on their records. Caleb and I'm Chance confused. could- And Demented. Whatever, just keep carry on. Alright, Austin Collins. When Lance doesn't win the World Heavyweight Championship again, what other single titles would you be aiming for in the near future? I wouldn't mind the IC title, even though it could possibly be Maximus. Could be an interesting oh, match. Oh wow. Would, Maximus would you versus be prepared Lance? to face Maximus? I mean, considering I'm in this alliance with him, studying his matches could help me. Okay. So Just a little watch out for Maximus. Shout out to Maximus. He's gonna <laughs> take your title. And possibly the US title. Oh. Would okay. you challenge the winner of Rowan Brown versus Spike Boss Spike if Man. that match does go down? Yeah. I mean right now Spike has been calling him out and Rowan Brown hasn't been accepting the challenge. He says he wants a darker, more sinister Spike Masters, but Spike has been jumping the family at every corner. Basically uh, yeah. owning I, the shadows. I think Rowan Brown really needs to take that challenge. If, uh, if, he's, if he's smart. Get rid of Spike while you have the chance. Who knows, we might see Rowan dominate instead of Spike. Exactly, I mean, I we saw Rowan dominate Yuri Rojo, so anything could be possible. And yeah. Yuri, at that time, was destroying the family one by one, much like Spike has been. Could it be a repeat? I mean, oh, no. is, is, this, Rowan to accept? is this what Rowan's plan is to see Spike's weak Don't points, say. to see what he can do to capitalize on taking down perhaps his biggest challenge today? Possibly. I mean, look at like, Yuri. He's... He beat both members of the family but still fell to Rowan Brown because he didn't know what Rowan Brown was capa capable of. And no, we've only really seen good. Rowan in one singles match since his appearance. Mm -hmm. Hell, I think we've only seen him in one match, in, oh, in two matches all up. Three, two, yeah. Um, that eight man match for the live title, the yeah, yeah, triple yeah. threat. Than the US tag, the US match. And the triple threat match, he survived to the final two, so. You yeah. know. A danger, definitely, to deal with. Alright, here's another question from Austin. Now, what tag teams do you think would be as good as Natural Romance in NCW now that you guys are separated? Basically, who's gonna be the 2020 Natural Romance? Milk and Tacos. <laughs> Can I, can I take a guess Spanker. on what's in the Alright, go for it, Tony. Milk tacos. It's milk and tacos. Milk and tacos. I mean... <laughs> your first. Lan Lance loves milk and tacos. Not but, together. No, just the milk? Oh, uh, no, I mean, you mean the food-wise. Yeah, Lance yeah, 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 no. Burt Spangle. Man, <laughs> hates Burt Spangle. <laughs> hey, I drink milk, so Burt likes... That's why you're so big, eh? All that calcium. Shout out to Burt Spangle. But, and let's let's talk about this uh, Milk and Tacos team for a second. They're challenging the team that beat you and Spike for the live tag team titles at the Wildcard Special this weekend. What do you think their chances are never teaming together, beating the team that beat you and Spike? Basically, two generals of tag team wrestling. Well, considering that tiny boy beat Jaden one-on-one, -on -one, to earn that opportunity, this yeah. But this is true. Tiny boy did beat Jaden. Let's not let him live it, live that down. By the way, I mean, Tiny boy is a good talent. He is. Not to mention the fact that he came in looking goofy with the whole purple and white hair, and you know, looking looking like a clown. But now he's hey, taking that more serious like, focus. Yeah, he he changed up hey, his hey. image a bit. It probably, with that whole look he had before, it probably gave the, the opponents like an underestimate. Exactly, yeah, that was the first time we saw Tiny Boy under this new look of, you know, 
half shaven head on multiple. Yeah. But yeah, Tiny Boy and Bert Spank. And then you also had later in the night, B ah, night Bert Spank defeating Eddie Knight in his singles debut match. Yeah. Yep. In an amateur wrestling bout. Oh, yeah, that was a great battle. Not even gonna deny that one. No, it was a great match, definitely. Milk shots for days after that. Yeah. And imagine the party when they win, if they do win the live tag titles. It, it's Milk. gonna be huge. The first ever Burt and Kurt special. <laughs> but, right, um, go ahead, also, yeah. coming around to the wildcard tournament for this year, Natural Romance will be reuniting to defend their crowns as a wildcard tag team tournament winners from last season. How do you go yeah. from... What, what are your thoughts on, on re-teaming with Alex? With Alex, exactly. Do you think we could see you guys double down and win the wildcard tag team uh, tournament again? Or do you think there's like too much animosity between the guys? between the two of you that it won't be as successful as the first time running around. I wouldn't say an animosity, but just like, since Alex has that world title match, when is that again? Uh, um, at Overload. Overload. He could possibly more focus on that than the tournament, so... Could be. That's, that's but true. if you guys win the tournament, you guys would also be competing for the world tag team titles, potentially at Overload. I mean, you do have a choice of when you challenge for the tag titles. Yeah. It could be a way. history repeat itself, or... It could be a possibility. I mean, imagine Natural Romance, a part of Defuse and Alpha, becoming the World Tag Team Champions. Three-team crossover, basically. Could be. So Natural Romance defying about? fucking faction warfare. Logic. Faction logic and fa tag team logic. We're faction jumping basically. Anyway, yeah. What? Are, so, what are your thoughts on uh, reteaming with um with Alex? It'd be cool. Just to have that one more run, possibly. Possibly, okay. you see if you guys are still, you know, in tag team shape. Even though you guys we haven't been teaming together for what feels like th three months now, three four months. Now the. Yeah. To, to capitalize on that question, would you consider re-teaming with Alex on on a on like a full-time level if it works out well? No doubt. Yeah, possibly. If he's down with it, I'm down with it. I don't well, see why not. The problem. Well, right now you guys are more focused on your uh, singles ambitions. You looking to become six-man tag team champions. Alex looking for his first world championship in NCW. Maybe Got more. Maybe potentially go back to the tag team division if you guys have nothing on the plates at that time. Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of tag teams out there who want to prove themselves against the 2019's best team. Yeah. yeah. Basically, there's some had... tag teams we never fight. Also, any, any uh, dream teams that you want to fight? Yeah, but why don't you list a couple? Give us like three. Who are coming to NCW? Yeah. There's also Brandon Ace and Michael Carter, we never fought. Well that was a I question that popped up Carter. on the um, on the uh, stream. How do you guys feel about Baltimore's finest as a tag team? Brandon Ace and Michael Carter, how do you feel about them? They're, they're a good tag team. Two time tag like, team champions. Yeah. And like how the way they're taking all the, the criticism of like, part, that's just the fact that people are seeing Carter's carrying Ace. Like, it's just like how me and Alex were, like, with the whole, I'm carrying Alex, Alex carrying me. But that's the thing, it was kind of down the middle between you and Alex. Everyone's saying that it's Michael Carter carrying Brendan Ace. However, when we've seen their single success, Brendan Ace is above Michael Carter. Yeah, with, yeah. like, Brendan Ace recently beating Max Maximus for the GPW yeah. Cruiserweight Championship. And also... And Beating the number one contender for the NCW Junior Heavyweight title, Tizda, just his previous episode. But Michael yep. Carter wasn't able to capture the hardcore title, and not to mention a recent defeat at the hands of the other member of the core, Leo Punk. 
who is friends with the junior heavyweight champion, Jacob Cass. So maybe they could be crossing wires on who's the more successful of the two. Or is it perhaps, does Brendan Ace get more opportunities than Michael Carter does? Um, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one either. Yeah, I don't know it really. I mean, they've kind of gotten a fair amount of shots. Just Brendan Ace more succeeds in his opportunities. Winning the live championship, something you've both held. Yeah, yeah. Michael Carter couldn't do it. Couldn't win the live title, couldn't win the hardcore title, so... Uh, maybe this, but he did get that big win over Spike Masters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was a good match too. It was. So, all right. So, um, dream cover dream matches. So this is kind of a personal question. You don't have to give us a whole lot of information on it, but um, how's your relationship with uh, Violet Edwards, and how did you guys meet? Well, first off, the relationship's good. And second of all, that could that all of that it can stay confidential. Yeah, you don't we're, have to tell us everything. We're tr we're doing a professional like interview, not, no personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally so, respect. next question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So, Anyone who wants to know about their relationship, too bad you don't get to know. Yeah. Why well, bother telling others when it's yeah, like their personal exactly. private life? It's a we'll keep it it's a personal sure. thing. You don't need to like announce it to the world like someone we know. Yeah, we we don't know we don't need to know anything else. It's you don't good. need to be braggy or but like constantly tweeting about it. We talked yeah, about. Let's move on to the next subject. We talked about tag team dream matches that you might want to do with Natural Romance this is later down the line. What about single dream matches that you have yet yeah. to have? Like we talked about, your us... Puma match was a dream match. Any yeah. other people in the core community that you want to face? Oh, well, I actually want to face some of the alpha members one on one. Okay, who, like who Dustin, do you have in mind? Dustin, Caleb, Chance. Oh well, you might get your chance against those three. Yeah. And just the more more with Caleb, just the fact that we didn't screwed out of a one on one, because. Like in another show. Why well, did it close down or did it just cancel the match? Just the way, like, the way it went. After the, originally, it was supposed to be me versus him inside a cage, steel cage, for their world title, but then someone cashed in, like, the very last second. Oh. Uh, okay. How do you cash in on a cage match? Do you, like, climb over and jump on them? Like, after the match, they cashed oh, in. Ah, right, 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 right. <laughs> Um, anyone else? Any other dream matches you see yourself possibly having, you want to have? Ultimately, that rematch potentially against Alex Wolf on a bigger stage? Yeah. I mean, what if you guys cross paths in the All-Stars or the King of Ring tournament? Like the 2020 That's crown between Alex and Lance. Would that be something you'd be more willing to fight for? World title is. I feel like the, it should be for the world title, nothing more, nothing less. Really, not even for the uh, King in the Ring or no. the All Stars Finals. No mid card titles. You wouldn't want to fight him for a mid card, maybe. Nah. Only world title. You and Alex. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Well, who knows? You've got a rematch. Alex has a title opportunity. It could happen. It, you know, yeah, I, possibly could. Tony possibly. could use his rematch afterwards. That's if Tony wants I to think, hang on to it, or I if he think, wants to take a breather like you did. I think if if I mean if double duty champions to, do get does get to a man. Yeah, true. But if, I think if so, if I were to lose that overload and Alex were to become champion, I would definitely hold on to a rematch just in case a Lance and Alex match ever came up, because I myself want to see that match. But the next pay-per-view totally. would be Meltdown. I mean, I mean, maybe it could happen sooner or later. Maybe another big pay-per-view. Good. I mean, we've seen Alex survive the Elimination Chamber at Rage, which is our annual event, multiple Elimination Chambers in one night. So, potentially, Alex 
could survive the Elimination Chamber again to hold on to that world title, which uh -huh. could lead you guys down to a future title opportunity, but also the potential of Mr. Money for Chaos cashing in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, we've yeah. got so far Tom Doyle, Jaden Shadow, and DJ Young, all three men hungry to become world champion again. So, who knows who else will fill out that match? And that could become a lethal threat to the World Heavyweight Championship. Very much could be. Huh, so far, a 75 minute uh, interview. Nice. <laughs> um, Leo, do you have any more questions for Nancy? Let's see. Alright. <laughs> uh, anyone watching? <laughs> yeah, anyone watching, do you have a question yeah. for our guest? <laughs> Anyone leave it in the chat if you if you have a question for Lance anything don't make it weird don't ask about his relationship don't ask the stupid question or yeah, I, don't I'll ask answer it with a smart and can't don't, don't ask breaking the news <laughs> breaking news uh, Neo goes to jail fast <laughs> yeah right we haven't been busted yet yeah we've been driving for a while we've been uh, driving for like the last them. forty minutes with the cops on our ass we really have. trying to do an interview and I gotta pop fucking co cops in the back of the head. I'm eating and driving <laughs> and we lasted this long. And we're, I'm doing a fucking interview and we're getting chased by the cops. Um, I don't think anyone has any questions. It doesn't seem like it. Duh. I think it's just, since I said all the personal questions are... Yeah, it's just yeah. like, yeah. personal <laughs> questions, <laughs> yep. But, that's all the questions that people wanted to know. I guess people don't really care about your career, or they don't know much about your career, but... Well, damn, Neo. I'm not saying that as a fucking bad thing, it's just... People know Lance's career. That's we know that it showed off that, we know that he was breakout star in GPW, that he was Rookie of the Year in NCW, that... Oh! He was Tag one. Team of the Year all one. across the fucking board. Well, I have a question. Go for it. Okay. So, um, you've been in call for what, like, three years? Three, two, two years going on to three. Two, two years? Okay. So going going on to three years, um, how long do you think you'd want to do do this? Like, when, when, do you, when, do do we... you, when do you think you'd, you'd want to hang up the boots? You'll see me for a while now. Probably up till later on. Probably until... when, like... Pretty much until Cole dies. Yeah. Okay. De or never know when, when that's gonna be. Or when my life out of call gets take take Pretty over. Hectic, yeah. We see yeah, people retire true. for that reason. Yeah. That's. I mean that Catherine Williamson. She could have carried that women's division for a lot longer than she did. Yeah, she was great. She was great. Um. All right. Well, that's the only question I had. Um. <laughs> Let's talk about an upcoming title fight, not yours, but Violet Edwards versus Otomi Zuki for the women's hardcore title. You think that one's uh, gonna be as brutal as what we saw from Otomi and Aiba? All or I know Eva. is in another show, Violet did beat Otomi. So I, okay. I wouldn't be surprised if the same happens. Oh, you say we're gonna see the first ever two time women's hardcore champion? Yeah. How do you feel about her opponent anyway? What are your thoughts on her? Oh shit. <laughs> oh god, that truck. <laughs> well, where do I begin? I mean, she's... She's in the NCW chat, you, you, you know you know how she is. Annoying? A brat? The bunny girl that kicks ass? You mean... Cop infringement of the bunny chick in Japan? Yeah, Potential exactly. stripper. Possibly turning next pole what's wrong with Carl yeah. for the most part. Possibly working at my strip club in so, the next couple years. So, you've got something against the women who more focus on their beauty and more focusing on being eye candy than the actual in-ring wrestling. Like, Basically. I mean, I kind of have something against that Yeah, too. same. But I mean, if their characters get over, if they get like, you know... Yeah. Oh, they get over if for get the over wrong reason. reason. They yeah, get opportunities for the oh, wrong that's reason. The problem. That's the yeah. main problem. Yeah. Yeah. Like with Kendall it's different. Like she you know she may look good.
great and stuff, she can fucking wrestle. Oh yeah, yeah she definitely current can. women's champion, definitely. current women's tag champion, two-ton North like, American champion. she can champion. kick ass. I was gonna actually bring up um, uh, something about Kendall. What do you think of Anarchy dominating the women's division? Basically have a hold on three of the four titles. I mean, they prove they're the dominant faction within NCW and I um, wouldn't be surprised if they're dominating other shows. I mean, we've heard that they are dominating GPW. Oh yeah, they are. But some may say that's because of the bomb management's favoritism, but... Possibly. Neo, do you have any favorites? What, in GPW or NCW? NCW. No, I hate all of you equally. <laughs> okay. He's not wrong. Glad to, glad to know that. <laughs> he tolerates me. Yeah, yeah he, he, to he barely tolerates me. That's only in games. You fuck around way too much. Mr. <laughs> hey, let's blow up the boat while we're going for a million dollars. Specialty, uh, fucking around is my specialty, man. Uh, you hey, can't knock me into that. Let's not forget my time where I flew with one propeller broken. But that wasn't fucking around. That was you actually got I'm, it where we needed to he go. Did, he was doing spins with the plane. What do you mean that fucking? I around? did that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, isn't broken anyway. down for professionalism, but go for it. <laughs> yeah, fuck professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> We've been shooting at cops for 40 minutes. This isn't professional at all. Oh god. Oh god. Hey, we I... went down to three stars instead of five. You wanna go back to five? <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. Don't even get us started on that one. Well, I think we can say this interview's over. What do you think, Neil? I, I feel <laughs> like it is. I mean, we've asked oh, everything we needed oh, to. God. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. God. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> what do we do? Yeah. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Go into the keep water. Going. Turn left. Keep Turn going. Left. Just keep driving. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. Well, we just, lost, we just lost our gas. He's dead now. Oh, shit. Well, yep. Lance is dead. Oh, fuck. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I think fire's the only way out of this. Burn. This has been the very first episode Run, of Neo. Chaos Conversation. Yeah, this. Sh oh, shit. Cops. <laughs> this is a good episode, guys. <laughs> and the house is broken down. This is I'm what NCW was all about. I'm getting in the water. Fuck this. <laughs> this is what NCW is all about. The chaos. I can just see you get right the cops running towards you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Wait. Oh, Lance is back. No, that's Neo. Well, this was fun. <laughs> should we end it? Yeah, yeah. I think we should. Um, all right, thank you, Lance, for being our first guest for our Chaos Conversation. Woo! Lance Romance, former NCW Live Champion, former Wildcard Tag Team Champion, World Tag Team Champion. Tony's dead. World Heavyweight Champion, Wildcard Tag Team Tournament, multiple multiple titles all across core. You can follow him at LanceRomance18 on Twitter. Uh, Tony, our co, I guess, questionnaire of the... Co-host, just say co-host. Co yeah, we'll, we'll call it that. You can follow him on NCW at TLW underscore 1221. And you can follow yeah. NCW on Twitter at NCWXTREME. To stay up to date with NCW action. Also, we may do a poll, we may not, see how popular this episode was. That And tell us in the comments who you'd like to see on episode 2 and what questions you want to ask our guest. It could be Alex Wolf, it could be, God forbid, Jet Cheto, it could be Brendan Ace, it could be anyone in the core community. Just tell us who you think should be our next guest on... Uh, Chaos conversation. You shit. Comment, tweet at us, let us know. DM us. Who the fuck is shooting me? The cops. What the fuck? 
<laughs> we all got gunned down for no reason. Well, it's because of you. You got a star, you bastard. <laughs> it wasn't me. It would have been Lance. Either way, that has been it from us today. Tune oh, in shit. next time. <laughs> oh shit! Oh god! Oh god! I, I hit a cop! I hit a cop! <laughs> Alright, <laughs> tune in next time for MTW Season 4, Episode 12. Until then, this is Neo Extreme, Lance Romance, and Tony Lee Williams saying goodbye, good night, good luck, and see you later. Tony's gone to jail. Sayonara. I hate you guys.